So what's up? It's your girl, Yessi Ortiz, sitting with my girl, Tracy hi. Perez. Hi, hi. Uh, Thank you for Tracy that from that New York, too. <laughs> That's right. From Brooklyn? Bron uh, oh, the no, not Bronx. I'm Bronx. <laughs> <laughs> she wanted to be like Jayla from the Bronx. Well, uh, no, it's Harlem. <laughs> Harlem. Yeah. Oh, okay. Nice. Well, welcome. You, you, you live out here in LA, though, I right? Do, I do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, Tracy, you do, you've do. you done East Lowe's High. We've seen you on East yeah. Lowe's High. Mm -hmm. And currently um, on The Strain. Yeah. FX, The Strain, Under yeah. Siege, correct? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And this show, uh, you know, I watch, I watch FX. You know, I watch Atlanta. I watch oh God, American, I you know, yeah. all these crazy shows on there. So when the strain came up on my television, I was like, "Yo, this looks like some crazy <laughs> alien vampire." <laughs> Some I was walking zombies. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Is that what you thought too when you first got the script? Was, well, yeah, it was very. I was well. I had known about the show, but at the time that I got the job, it was a perfect time for me to like binge watch because I had been wanting to. Like I was oh. watching all these other shows, and you know now it's like the culture of binge watching. Yes. So I was like, oh, good, I get to knock it out. But I was surprised because I had heard it was about like vampires, but at the same time, I also knew about the graphic novels, so. Like, I absorbed everything. Like, I read everything. You read all the novels? Everything. Yeah, it was just like, oh my gosh. just consumed everything. So my, so my world could just be that, Yeah, you know, and I could understand that a little better. Not, obviously, she being in Toronto and not even here or New York. Yeah. So, um, but that was intriguing to me how it became a virus. And this virus was something that was so out of control. And it made us go against ourselves. And essentially, like, if, you know, your mom has it yeah and you're gonna have to kill her because then she's gonna spread, she's gonna it, spread it spread it or turn yeah. it into that and i like that conflict um because it does now i mean that's a very human like it counters the human instinct like yeah you yeah how do you even get yourself in <laughs> one how do you prepare yourself to to come to that conclusion like okay i'm gonna have to kill my mom <laughs> and then like realize because an actor is bringing the bringing the most believable part of what the story is and it's really you're 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 being very believable yeah it was i know it you gotta yeah. feel it you it gotta worked. really feel it it's gonna be hard shocked it worked um well i guess it helped also watching the previous seasons so yeah it's like getting in the headspace of watching everybody else's work and then but this was unique in the sense that in the web series you actually get to see her story like her full story like when she was a normal like regular person yeah yeah and things are still going crazy but you can still see that she's in a bit of a denial right and the dynamic between her mom is that you know she's basically like the the male figure in the household it's just her and her mom so it felt very um like a good place to really start a conversation about like well it, when when things are down for the count and you know anytime you hear about some catastrophe that might happen in LA or New York which is usually like the two places where people are like yeah Armageddon you know <laughs> yeah <laughs> invasions right um, you know you think about man I, I have to save like my family or I have yeah. to fight for them that's all you think about yeah. so in that sense it was you know I'm very attached to my family and so it was easier to get in that space but to actually get into this Based of the possibility that of that other side, yeah, which is what the character Gus is going through this year. Uh, I'm like, I'm uh, not sure. I mean, it, it had to. It's. It was a very scary. I, I thought I was like, yeah, it, it it looks like and it feels. I'm sure very scary too because they, the set and the way they put you in these you know situations and and very you know gory. Yeah. As well, is did you at all like? I'm thinking. She had to have any some nightmares. Did you have nightmares? I, you know, it's weird. I'm actually, I, I think because I, I like to watch it before I go to sleep. Oh, <laughs> my God. Yeah. I'm so crazy. I do. It just makes me, like, I feel, I like the experience of it. Obviously, like, if, not if I had an early call or something. But, but I like to feel, like, really in the world. You yeah. Know? Especially, maybe not other other shows so yeah. much, but with this one in particular because it kind of like sits with you for a little bit I have had nightmares but this season watching this season I've mm. had those nightmares and when I saw it yeah and it was very strange because I was confused it yeah. started off like you know how the strokeway come they're very like 
you hear them and they linger and then yeah. they pop out. So it was a lot like L listening, laying in bed, hearing your house settle. You're like, what's <laughs> happening? Yeah, like, like why? <laughs> why would this exist here? Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, the care. You have a lot of fans of the show. Your character is very strong, very resilient, yeah. and well, I love the fact that you're Latina and it's so needed in yeah. the industry. Latinos in the industry because there's such a lack. Yeah, you know, and congratulations too because I know variety. You know, you were at the variety party, 10 Latinos oh, to watch, yeah, and yeah. just seeing, being a part of that, mm -hmm. you know. How important is that? Like, I mean, I know for me it's important, but for those who are watching, you know, maybe there's somebody out there watching who wants to be an actress. How important is it for us Latinos to be portrayed correctly and accurately on, on film? I tell you, it's huge to me because when I, you know, there was a, there were some moments when I told myself I wasn't going to do this, you know, because I, I understood, I did study the business and I studied what other actors were taking and, and I understood that it was mostly what's available. Mm -hmm. And if you want to act and if you want to grow, you're like, well, you got to take a job to, that you have to speak, yeah. you know. Yeah, there was a climate for it. And I felt like, um, you know, when I first started out in New York, it felt very, I was very rebellious about it mm -hmm. and it, I think it spiraled into me getting the type of work that I get here, especially with East Lowe's, like my character Vanessa, she's she's like top queen bee till the end, no matter, it doesn't matter if she has HIV, she's still going to make something of her life mm -hmm. and that to me is like an ultimate hero, like mm -hmm. no matter what, by any means necessary and I think our culture, you know, when we talk about our women, yeah, we, we grew up with that, you know, yeah. we saw our, our, our women struggle our sister struggle and mother struggle and when we look at what what we have in our lives we're like well that's so much more therefore I need to hustle I need to push so um, you know there were times in New York where I actually didn't go to certain auditions because and what right do I have right like I, people thought you shouldn't do that because you it's not like you have a name it's not like you have the luxury of turning any audition down but they were so specifically like the hot Latina um, Big or, boobs, or, not very good English, or so, right, or so victimized. Yeah, that I was like, this actually isn't my reality, and mm -hmm. I I would feel very strange portraying, portraying that yeah. because I know that my portrayal of it means my acceptance of it in in the industry. Yeah, you know, when I know I know, man, I know beautiful stories, and I know really like interesting stories about Latinas. So when I came out here, it was more about learning to write and produce content so that I could create those characters. And I fell into Eastlos in this really like kind of itchy way because I, I got so frustrated seeing the casting over and over. And I just submitted myself because I said, well, why not? All I can do is close the door and I keep knocking, close the door, I keep knocking. Keep knocking, right. And that is what happened because I was new to town, so they didn't know me. Yeah. And I was like, that's okay, get to know me. What I always say is, it doesn't matter how many meetings I have because what's more important to me is someone else knows my name. As long as in these meetings that I go to and nothing comes out of it, it's okay. Yeah. Somebody else it's knows my name. It's a seed yeah. that was planted. You saw my face. Yeah. You saw what I look like, and you saw my name. Yeah. And that's what's important. You know what I'm about. Yeah. 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 So I, I can, I can understand why you would pick and choose. And you know what? I have to say that that is very. It takes a lot of courage to do that mm -hmm. because there's a lot of actors trying to do something, trying to break into an industry. And as Latinas, there's all there's already a difficult challenge to try and fit you know, get a role that's mm -hmm. not your stereotype. Right. So, so um, you know, I'm proud of you. That's, Thank that's you. awesome. Thank you, girl. But yeah. from the get, I mean, I, I, I was trying to find, in New York it was difficult because, you know, I, I'm South American, you mm -hmm. know, but I grew up in a Caribbean environment. And so easily, of course, I'm always like Puerto Rican or Dominican. Uh -huh. But out here, it was so, it was so dope to actually be able to like, really be immersed in like the Mexican culture and the Central American culture and, that to me feels so much so creative too, you mm -hmm. know, to be able to play both and it really being just a matter of time till something really really special comes up and yeah. stuff like, you know, even the strain, I mean that was a guest star spot that I that I did. I went for a guest star spot and then they called me back and said, Hey, they have we have this story. We have more of a story for you. You're like, All right, let's do but it. I thought, I thought it was like one of five characters. So yeah. I was like, Oh, I wonder what I'm working with. Why am I in every scene? <laughs> Why am I in every scene? And I was like, This is this is what I want. That's this is awesome. what I want where it's about the story, it's about the character, yeah. and and these circumstances are amazing. Yeah, and you're in the last season, the, the final season is well, coming up? The final season is next year. Next year. So they'll be shooting that um, next year. So next year, we, so do you know where your character is going to be going? 
um, without bringing any spoil alerts to fans? Uh, I think she's going where everyone else is going. <laughs> <laughs> Who's alive at this point? Because, um, yeah, it gets pretty dark. I, I'm catching up on this season. Yeah. Because, you know, I'm trying to, like, I like the binge watching experience with that season. Yeah. I was like, no, I just want, like, I want to put it together. Right. Um, but it's getting really, really gloomy. I mean, there's only so much where you can get until there's an invasion and... And, and then the something happens. Yeah. So, okay. So, um, but she, what I love is that she's she is a fighter and, you know, the, the cast is so great that uh, I, I don't know what's going to happen, but it's just nice to be able to be in that category where she is someone who's, you know, fighting for, for her life and, and for her mom's life. Yeah, and, and it's, uh, it's, it's going to be exciting to watch, so make sure you catch the web series, um, FX, The Strains, Under Siege, right? Mm -hmm. And then I know you're a huge advocate on um, voting. We have yeah. a crazy election. Crazy. I mean, it's kind of scary to think that these are our two candidates. I know. It's like when you do that, what is it, like when you do that thing with the eyes and there's that sound effect of like the, the window? Yeah. <laughs> no, it's like where every morning it's like, what's happening What's today? happening now? What's going to be revealed? Gosh, what happened now? <laughs> but, you know, what, you know, obviously I'm not going to ask you who you're going to vote for, but, you know, what are your thoughts about yeah. this election? Um, well, I think because it makes you feel that way, because it incites so much um, discussion and it really unearths this really um, dark side of our our country yeah. that, I, you know, I like the dark side. I like saying, let's explore that, let's talk about that, because how else are you going to change it? Mm -hmm. So, but there is a malicious part of it that has affected our community that we do need to talk about, mm -hmm. that we do need to represent. And voting, you know, I, I, I once upon a time was one of those people too that's like, well, it's corrupt, you know, well, I know too much, well, it, but... Oh, I was the same much. way. I was the same way. I'm like, oh, conspiracy theory, it's... Yeah, um, yeah and it's while that, that can still exist, mm -hmm. I think there's also, what can I do about it now in, in my world when I see that, that this is pretty v a vital time. Yeah. And our numbers, our influence, our intelligence. Yeah. Like, let's be smart about this. Yes. You know, as a culture, like, we, we understand within ourselves the reasons why um, we're not more active, but a lot of it has to do with the fact that we're so used to being invisible or not represented, which is mm -hmm. what ties into, you know, media. Yeah. Like, okay, well, if we only see this one thing, then we only think that one voice is the one that's going to be heard. Mm -hmm. But if we see a variety, like now you do see a lot of, of more variety of characters for, for like yeah. actors. Yeah. And that is, and that's still going to be pushed through. But on the flip side of that, politics has kind of the same mirror, yeah. you know, and it's our job to actually participate um, and I've been working with Voto Latino this past year well this year to be able to uh, you know talk about the issues like okay it's okay to feel this way but let's actually think up about how to ex express action and how to influence others so that mm -hmm. they can themselves feel empowered and that when you feel empowered it doesn't only go for politics or your career it right goes for your self-worth it Absolutely. goes for what you can contribute to your community there start they, there's just this fire that gets lit under yeah. you you're just like let me stay awake on all of like, yeah what's it balances mm -hmm. everything out so I, I don't think that it's this one singular thing like if you vote um, you know you're you're only going to bridge this one path it's like no I think it's it's something that makes you feel like you're part of of this country because we are yeah we are we just yeah. have to remember yeah, yeah we are we're <laughs> citizens yeah like we matter yeah. and um you know, that we matter is very profound Yeah, at this time. Absolutely. You know, so color. you've got to stay woke and pay attention to what's happening with uh, these laws that are being yeah. trying to pass in this election. So if anything, just bring awareness to what's happening. And yeah, and don't be afraid to talk about it, yeah. you know, because it was such a hush-hush thing for a while that I think it's it's okay now to talk about it, and that's what I love right? about it. Yeah, it's okay to talk about it. Ask questions. If you don't know a qu the answer to or you not very confident in what the question is, you're not sure yeah. what the question is, Mm -hmm. Ask, mm -hmm. what does that mean? Yeah, it's okay to ask. What does yeah. that mean? So, I want to thank you for coming yeah. through. Um, so really much. appreciate you hanging out with us thank here you. at Power 106. Thank you. Make sure to catch our girl Tracy. And where can we follow you? <laughs> um, well, I'm on Twitter at Tracy underscore Perez, and on Instagram at Reina del Sueño. Reina de los Sueños. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah. that's it for now, man. It's Power 106. Bye.